Well, g'day guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I've just received delivery of the new Climb Krios Pro Adventure Style Helmet. Now, I've been using the BMW Carbon 7 for a while, and whilst it's a great lightweight helmet, I find it quite tricky being a modular design when I'm running my wires down to the microphone. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome. Plus, it's more of a it's more of a street style helmet. What I'm looking for is that adventure style helmet, the sort of Ewan McGregor, Charlie Boardman, long way around type helmet, and that's exactly what this is. It's probably the best helmet on the market at the moment, and it's certainly the lightest. So, if you're thinking about buying a climb, sorry, a climb, I keep pronouncing that wrong. If you're thinking about buying the climb at the moment, you might want to stay tuned for the video. So let's delve in and take a look at the Climb Krios Pro. I, I purchased this a couple of uh, days ago from a company in Melbourne called BM Motorcycles. They specialize in BMW accessories. So we'll open up the box. Um, obviously we're getting a nice helmet bag there. Undo that. Uh, I've had this out of the box, I must confess, I couldn't wait to do the video. Uh, but I have left on the packaging type stickers. So you can see over the visor we've got this protective film. Now this is uh, what they call a transition visor. So it's similar to buying um, a pair of spectacles, pair of glasses, and when you walk out in the sun they'll go dark, which is, I think that's about a first for a motorcycle helmet. So that's the transition lens that it comes with, the visor is transition. Uh, we'll just have a dig in the box here. It also comes with, uh, first time out the bag, comes with a spare clear visor, which will be very useful. Um, it also comes with a pin lock shield. Now if you don't know what that is, it's actually like double glazing for your visor. This fits on the inside and it just prevents it fogging up. I don't know about you, but when I'm riding and uh, I slow down and come to an intersection, quite often I'll just crack the visor open a little bit and let some air in so it doesn't steam up. So that's the pin lock visor, the uh, pin lock insert, let's call it, and the spare visor. Um, and then also in the box, you get your peak which is great. Um, now I'm hoping that this doesn't actually catch the wind. I've had a look at some of the uh, uh, marketing information and specifications for the helmet online and, and they do assure you that it doesn't actually give you any drag on your neck. So um, also in the box, we get some mounting accessories um, for attaching the peak and removing the visors. So you can actually run this helmet in a, a few different modes. What I like about this is uh, it's got, it's kind of, without the peak, it's kind of got that Simpson Bandit type look, um, which the drag racers wear. Um, and I used to wear one, although it was illegal. I used to wear a, a Simpson Bandit on my VMAX back in the day because I thought it kind of looked tough. So it does have that sort of, sort of uh, look about it. Now, hoping that we'll have lots of ventilation and lots of uh, visibility with such a big opening at the front there and also with the, the vent on the top. Uh, if we move around to the back, we can see we've got some exhaust ports on there as well and some exhaust ports on the side there. Taking a closer look inside, um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. I keep getting it wrong. Choroid is the material uh, that the liner is made out of. And as you can see, all these liners and cheek pads are actually Velcroed in. Um, the other great feature about this helmet, and if I just try and move in a little bit, it's got this new, uh, quite clever latching system rather than a D-ring. Uh, you just drop that on. I'm bound to get it wrong on the demo. 
and it's there we go and it's magnetized and it just drops into place so you can do that one-handed or so they say so that's some of the features i'm hoping that i can uh, install my comm system quite easily because of the velcro um, and also i'm gonna add my gopro mounting on the front or come up with some sort of a bracket on the front there so pretty pleased with the helmet so far um, what i'll do is uh, I'll take off the sides here and I'll show you how we attach the peak. Right then, let's go ahead and install the peak on the helmet. Now to do that, we need to take off these covers here. These covers are not gonna go back on with the peak. They're just there to hide the mechanism um, when you're not using the peak. So to do that, what we need to do is move this through 90 degrees and they are quite tricky. As you can see quite tight once you've done that you should be able to get your fingers under there and just remove that and the reason you need hopefully it'll focus on that little spigot as you can see before you turn it 90 degrees it can't come out of the slot so that's the reason for that set that to one side because we're going to reuse them they do supply a couple of spares and they're quite tough so don't be worried too much about breaking them as I said, then we remove this area uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll remove the other side. Okay, now we've taken off the fasteners, we'll grab the peak. So there's the peak. Now, before we install the peak, we need to remove a screw, a plastic screw at the top of the helmet there. And we'll use our trusty Swiss Army knife and we'll take that out. Now you can actually reuse this one, um, but if you need to uh, take the peak off, obviously you're gonna need your knife or a screwdriver, but they give you a replacement, which is like a thumb screw. So you're probably better off to use that. Now what you do, hopefully you can see this and we sit the peak on the top there and there's actually two positions you've got the forward position I'll just tip the helmet or the rear position so I'll put this in the rear and we'll just use the thumb screw there and that just holds that in place as I said we don't need those black covers again because this area covers the mechanism the next thing we do is take our fastener that we put to one side and we drop that into the hole there and it is quite tricky oh, as you can see and even worse when you're filming a, a demo it always goes wrong I sell software I'm an engineer and I sell software and if it can go wrong on a demo it will go wrong and then we just turn that 90 degrees and that's locked into place and we'll spin it around and hopefully we can do the other side okay as i said if it can go wrong it will go wrong and we'll drop that into there come on don't let me down now there we go and just give that a, a turn and there it is we've got the peak installed the cool thing about this is that if you decide you want to drop the peak um, back a little bit, all you do is undo the thumb screw on the top and just give that a turn and then secure it wherever you want. So I might leave it in its furthest position. And that's the peak installed. Okay, so that's the unboxing done and we've installed the peak. The next thing we'll do is fire up the bike and we'll give it a test ride, so stay tuned. Well guys, what an absolutely stonking morning we've got here in regional Victoria. So, I'm up uh, fairly early testing out the new Climb Krios Pro. Uh, it's the first time I've had the helmet on. I have to say I'm really, really impressed with it so far. 
So if you've enjoyed the first half of the video, the uh, the unboxing and the review so far, then uh, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up on, on the video. And uh, if you could see your way to um, subscribing for future videos, that'd be uh, that'd be fantastic. So I'm up fairly early this morning in uh, Victoria. It's a public uh, holiday long weekend. We had the um, the AFL footy grand final yesterday. So most people are going to be uh, hungover and still in bed, having drunk too much of the old uh, karaoke juice. So I just thought it would be nice and opportune, given it's a beautiful morning, to come out, throw the helmet on, and give you my thoughts on the helmet. Now, as I said, I'm in regional Victoria and it's uh, it's just after 8 in the morning and uh, given the uh, area that we're in, we've got to be extremely careful for kangaroos uh, at this time of the morning. They're quite active until towards midday when they tend to shelter and, and get out of the sun. So we'll take it uh, nice and easy. initial uh, thoughts on the helmet I'll have to say uh, you've got uh, this massive visor and a, and a full big wide uh, field of view which is totally different from uh, what I'm used to the other thing that I'm not used to is uh, is this peak it, it, it's kind of putting me off for a little bit but I'm sure I'll get used to it so I'm not too far away from home I'm actually uh, still in lockdown here in Victoria so I'm, I'm well within my five kilometer um, radius of where I live so I'm not doing anything illegal but again where I live is uh, quite rural and we've got to watch out for kangaroos actually a beautiful area through here I'm so blessed to be living in this area Good morning sir so I'm going quite slow obviously so there's not much in the way of wind buffeting although the stretch that I was just on was a uh, hundred kilometer an hour stretch um, it is noisier than the BMW carbon 7 but it's designed for a different purpose. I mean, this uh, this helmet is designed for off-road adventures, getting into the outback, and, and and of course, in that situation, you want to get plenty of ventilation through the helmet. Um, I actually found or find that with my BMW Carbon 7, um, that I get really super hot in summer. You don't get much. Uh, you don't get much airflow through there, but having said that, it's, it's really quiet at higher speeds, so there's always a trade-off. Now, again, I'm just being super careful here because there's always Skippy kicking around, and when there's one, there'll be another one. Um, actually, it would be cool if we saw one without hitting it. That would be great for the video, wouldn't it? So it's a, a nice, bright, sunny Australian day um, today and uh, the transition visor is really doing its job. Now this is the first time I've ever had a helmet with a transition visor. My, uh, my helmet that I have at the moment comes with a clear visor, um, drop down sunglasses and also uh, has a, a black visor if you want to change it out. The problem is if you put the black visor on and then drop down your internal sunnies, it's just too dark. So I'm just coming up on one of the favorite stretches of uh, local roads in my neighborhood. It really is a cool, a cool bit of road, cool stretch of road. Not many people realize it's here, so it's usually fairly quiet. But it's a great one for bikes. Although you've got to keep your concentration about you and um, you've also got to watch out for Skippy as I said. So in terms of uh, price, you know, I mean what price do you put on protecting your brain? 
but this was $1200 Australian um, plus it cost me another $20 to get it delivered so quite an expensive helmet um, but having said that my BMW helmet was about the same price although I did manage to get a bit of a, um, a good deal on retail from the dealer when I bought the brand new B, uh, BMW GS last year so as you can see hopefully this is a fantastic stretch of road it really is cool and it's a, a little bit of a, um, a hidden gem just near where I live there so the other great feature about this helmet is actually comes with uh, pre-installed pin lock um, I don't know what you call them uh, lugs or something fasteners um, they don't install the pin lock shield or vi internal visor for you you have to do that yourself but it's a pretty easy job you just got to keep everything clean as you're putting it in um, but the pin lock makes a massive difference it's actually quite cold this morning it, what, what are we on now eight degrees and I've got my heated grips on and I'm getting no fogging at all on on the visor so that that's that's fantastic it's still quite early here and uh, as you can see the sun is shining so I'm not going to go home just yet I'm going to take a ride down to my local reservoir I've got my drone in the Moscow tank bag so I'll throw up the drone and we'll get some drone footage so stay tuned to the end of the video so this is my local reservoir or one of them and it should be quite quiet hopefully most people still be in bed Well, there you go guys that's been my review of the climb krios pro helmet hope you found the review useful if you did then don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you want to see more videos like this then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button as well anyway i'm going to sign off now thanks again for dropping by this is me the boomerang biker ride safe and have a great day